Hello, I'm Francisco. I'm a mechanical engineer. I've recently moved to a new job and I really, really like it that um, in my previous role, I used to be a consultant and uh, kind of an engineering educator. And uh, I didn't think I would at the time, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so that's what I want to do now, here, teach on YouTube, go through CAD. Let's do it. Okay, today we're going to be having a look at creating a 3D model of this set of pliers. It's a simple set of pliers that I found around the house and it's made up of five parts. We've got the top plier, bottom plier, pin, and the two handles. So we're going to be recreating this as a 3D model inside of Autodesk Inventor using the multi-solid body modeling approach. So I'll show you what the end result will look like. This is our goal. This is what we want to create. We want to create an assembly with different parts inside it um, that captures the geometry of these pliers, or at least something close to that. Um, now, one thing that we should say before we get started is that uh, the multi-solid body modeling approach, uh, rather than creating the parts individually, one by one, and then putting them together in an assembly, we're going to be creating a single part that will have each of these parts as a solid body. We'll then later separate them into solid bodies. So let's get to it. So close that down and we'll start a new standard millimeter part. And full disclosure, on the other screen, I have all the dimensions. So if you see me looking away, it's because of that. We'll start off by creating a sketch down on the ground plane. And I'm going to change the view. And we'll get started by inserting an image. This is a photo that I took of the pliers in plan view. So we'll place it down and we'll reorient it, but we won't know the scale just yet. Now, I happen to know the dimension of this circle here and this circle here. So we'll come along here and we'll create an 11 millimeter circle and a 20 millimeter circle. So far, so good. All right, and we'll get started by dragging this image in approximately the right shape. And the purpose of the image isn't so much to give the dimensions, I actually measured them earlier. Uh, it's to guide the uh, creation of the geometry. Um, now, if you were doing this for a commercial purpose, I'd recommend strongly that you uh, take careful measurements of the photo and scale it accordingly. But as this is just an educational video, we will take it easy. There we go. Approximately pretty good. Okay, so using this as a template, we're going to recreate a sketch that will represent this geometry. So we'll go ahead and click line. And starting off at the center of the circle, I'll create a line that touches the edge. I'll create a second line. And using the constraints, make these collinear. So let's say collinear, duk, duk, beautiful. And because this center line isn't going to be used for construction, oh, just for geometry, we're going to uh, make it a construction line. So right click, construction. Excellent. Okay, so this little line here, I happen to know its absolute dimension is 2.75. Beautiful. Okay. And we happen to know as well that it is uh, 67.5 degrees from the origin like that. Great. Okay. From there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a line and we'll bring it out here and another line. And these two are going to run parallel with one another. So we'll create a parallel constraint between this line and this line. Next, we know that they're 10 millimeters apart. And they happen to be connected with a construction line at the end that runs perpendicular to them both. So we'll say perpendicular, and because it's already over constrained, there we go. I'll make it a construction line. And we'll go ahead and create further lines. So there's one, there's another. And these two lines happen to be parallel with one another and equal in length. Beautiful. And the length is 2.25. And it runs at an angle of 60 degrees. Oh, looking good. Modeling's the best. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll change the angle of that a little bit and press on. Now we'll finish this with a few arcs. So a top arc there, a bottom arc there, and a third arc to finish it off. And these arcs are tangential to one another. Looking good. The arc at the end is uh, four millimeters. The top arc there is 100 and the bottom arc is 115 in radius. 
So at the moment, it's not fully constrained, but we can shift it around um, to get it into approximately the right shape. Uh, we'll go ahead and we will put in the dimensions. So yeah, that 10 millimeters is already there. And this line here happens to be 23.5 mils long. Beautiful. All right, uh, it should almost be fully constrained. Uh, there's just one more dimension that's lacking. Well, a few more. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that at 2.25. And the length between the center point and this is 100. Good, good, excellent. And that length there is uh, 13.75. Great. Okay, so approximation of the geometry. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and uh, recreate the uh, this part of the head. So we'll come along line, create another line that comes from the origin, and out here. And we'll make sure that these two are collinear. They happen to also be collinear here. There we go. And we'll right-click this one to make a construction. And oops, don't shift the background. Uh, this line here, its absolute dimension is two millimeters. I think it's actually closer to 2.75, maybe 2.5, 2.5. Yeah, 2.5, good. Um, in reality, take careful measurements, but this is a learning exercise. All right, so line, and we'll finish off the geometry. We've got one line there, one line here. And importantly, we've got a point at the end of this line here that needs to be horizontally in line with that center point there. So to do that, we'll create a horizontal constraint between the end point of that line and the center point there. Ooh, looking good. Okay. Now there is a construction line that lives here and its absolute dimension is about 40 millimeters. Mm, 39 millimeters. Mm, 39.5 millimeters. Close enough. Um, this line here we'll say is 9.5 and the length perpendicular to construction line there is, yeah, there we go. And we'll say 2.25, maybe two millimeters, maybe 1.75 millimeters. We got there in the end. All right, so we'll go ahead and close off this jaw. Lovely. And uh, we can click and drag around to see how it's not fully constrained. So we can see there's nothing that fixes the end length of this line here. So we'll go ahead and make that 2.85, looking good. And yes, that's a pretty good simulacrum. We're gonna go ahead later and add in all these little teeth and this oval and this oval here, um, that'll come in time. So go ahead and click finish sketch. And what we can do here is now we've got the three enclosed, well, actually four, but we're only gonna use three, three enclosed profiles. Um, so we can, using the extrude command, we can drag it up into the third dimension uh, in this case, um, because there's going to be some symmetries, I'm going to extrude it symmetrically in both directions. And its height is 9.5. Okay, so we're coming across our first challenge. We've got some complex geometries here on the side of the pliers. It's a complex set of chamfers that run along the edge there. We want to try and reproduce it. So I'll take a quick measurement of this line here. And we can see that it's 5.5. Uh, Wonderful. So we'll get started. And I'm going to do it in a little bit of a strange way, but very useful. Create a 2D sketch on here. And I'm going to create a line. Now, I happen to know that it's 5.5 from that measurement. So we'll come along here. And I'm just going to do two lines because I'm lazy. One line there and another line there. And we'll say that that's 5.5 over 2. And same deal here, 5.5 over 2. Whoops, 5.5 over 2. Wonderful, living the dream. Okay, next, finish the sketch. Now, this is where we're going to get crazy. What we want to do is we want to chop off the material that happens to run through this point, this point, and this point. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing that, but I've got a real lazy approach to this. And uh, if you want to be quick, lazy is good. So we'll come along here and say plane. And here we go, we'll say a three-point plane between this point, this point, and this point. And here, we could extrude, but I'm going to use the, um, uh, what are we doing? Uh, trim, where is it? What am I looking for? Split, split, come on, that's it. Split, so here we can come along and we're going to choose to split solid. 
and we're going to choose that plane and we're not going to be splitting into separate parts or bodies what we're going to be doing is just trimming the solid so there we go lovely we'll repeat the process on the other side always good practice to make your work planes invisible after you've used them so there we go we'll come along here and we'll say plane by three points click here here and here lovely wonderful good okay and we'll say split same deal we'll trim the solid this time flip the direction oh we're geniuses look at that beautiful so um we've got one plier without the teeth um without the connection but it's getting there it's getting there um so what we want to do next is we want to create a mirror of this solid body now when you create a part an inventor when you start extruding and cutting and whatnot it's all modifying a single solid body the multi-solid body approach involves creating multiple solid bodies so we're going to create our first duplicate let's create mirror and what we're going to do is we're going to change two solids here and we'll pick the mirror plane and for the mirror plane we'll pick the origin this plane the xz plane because it happens to oops not that one uh we'll say mirror plane again the xy plane that's the one that bisects it and very very importantly we're going to be clicking this button here new solid so when it does mirror this body it's going to be creating a second solid body excellent excellent okay so we've got two solid bodies there so we've got uh we've got the top plier and we've got the bottom plier lovely okay and if i toggle the visibility you can see those parts individually so we need to modify some of these parts they start to have some distinctions between them so the top plier for example um if we have a look at the top plier here um it has a segment above and the bottom plier has a segment below so we're going to use some extrusions to create that so we'll come along here and we'll say start a 2d sketch and there's a couple of ways that we could do this but i'm just going to create a circle and I'm going to extrude it halfway up. A few ways of doing this, but I'm just going to be lazy. 4.5, oops, 4.5 over 2. What happened? Oh, 9.5 <laughs> over 2. My maths is wrong. Wonderful. 9.5 over 2. So that's our top plier. And for the bottom plier, we're going to do the inverse. So we'll come along here, create a sketch. And this time I'll show you a slightly different way of doing it. We'll extrude as we did before, but rather than specifying a length, we will say two. And we're going to go to that middle plane there, the uh, XZ plane. Oh, beautiful, wonderful. That's kind of a better way of doing it because no matter how thick you make it, it'll always go to the center point. So now we can see that we've got the two parts and they slot into each other. We'll come along here later and we'll add in the, um, the little gaps uh, so they can actually move. Um, but for now, we'll just continue as is. Next, uh, we'll come along here, and what I want to do is add a little bit of meat onto the top here. And the hole at the top happens to be a bit smaller. It is two, 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 uh, 8.25. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a circle here. 8.25 millimeters in diameter. Wonderful, excellent. And we'll extrude this, and here we can say down to, and we only want to target well, really the middle plane there. So we'll say the XZ plane. So now the geometries are slightly different from one another. If we have a look, we can come to view and do a half section view, pick a plane, and we can see how the parts overlap each other. Wonderful. That'll come in better later when we come to do the pin. All right, so difficult part. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to create the teeth. Oof. It's actually just a, a carry-on from the sketching we did earlier, but it's a little bit of a pain. That's okay, though. Um, what I'm going to do is create the teeth on the top plier and just mirror them onto the other side. Um, so, a little bit lazy. That's okay. Uh, no, actually, we can mirror the sketch. Yes, even lazier still. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll create a line here, and it'll come in 1.5 millimeters. And I'm going to fudge this a little bit because to get these teeth absolutely perfect will take a lot of measurement and a lot of work. Um, what we'll do is we will create an equals constraint there. Lovely. And we'll say that they're half a mil tall and one mil wide. Good. That's, that's one set of teeth so far. So 
we happen to know that there are 12 teeth. So we'll come along here and we will create a pattern, rectangular pattern. Choose that tooth, pick the direction of the pattern. And here we can put 12 in the pattern with a period of one millimeter. Ooh, looking good so far. Excellent, wonderful, good. Right. Okay, so we're gonna finish off the teeth that are a little bit tricky. We can do it though. We'll go ahead and we're going to create two ellipses that are going to be used to guide the ovular section with teeth here. So we're gonna create one oval and another oval and give them dimensions that we measured earlier. So 5.75 and uh, 2.875 uh, and for the inner oval we'll say 5.75 minus 2 and 2.875 minus 1.25 excellent these are going to be construction ovals and they're going to represent the bottom and the tops of the teeth in the ovular section i'm going to create a line here and here uh, just to make sure that these ovals stay horizontally aligned. Ovals can be a little bit treacherous sometimes. There we go, looking good, excellent. Okay, linear, good. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain the oval to the end of the teeth there and the center point to that line there. And we can tell that they're fully constrained because the lines have turned black. Wonderful, excellent, let's go. So next, what we'll do is we'll create the lines representing the teeth. Now, uh, they're a little bit tricky to measure, but we happen to know that they're all equal. So we'll go along here and we're going to create a whole bunch of lines. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. And then it will probably go off from there, but we'll continue it shortly. Now, these teeth happen to all be equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the uh, show constraints command and just make sure that uh, the inferred constraints are correct. Now, these aren't actually right angles. So I'm going to go ahead and assassinate each of those right angle constraints. Wonderful. All right, next we'll come along with our equals and we'll create uh, equals constraint between each of these teeth so that they're all the same size. Looking good, looking good. It's getting there. Oh no, catastrophe. Oops, here we go. Just shuffle it around. Equals, equals. Oh, maybe a tooth too far. We'll get rid of those. Excellent, there we go. So all the teeth should be equal, looking good. Um, the reason why they're unconstrained is at the moment there's no um, consensus as to where they have to wrap up. Uh, and that's because we need to do the final oval here. We're not going to cut it out just yet, but we are going to measure it just to make sure that we are in a good place later on. So 12.75 and 10.5. So we'll come along here and oval. Here we go. 12.75 over 2 and 10.5 over 2. Lovely. Excellent. So we'll come along and as before, constrain the center of the oval there. Oh, I forgot to do my all important horizontal line to make sure that the oval doesn't betray us by tilting. There we go. Looking good. Okay, we'll connect the center of that oval to the center line there. And I'm going to drag it into position so that it is positioned half a millimeter away from that edge. And it does look a little bit uh, large. 12.75 over 2. One moment, friends. We might have to adjust the size a little bit. That's okay. We'll come along here, and this is going to represent the wire cutter portion of it. So good, excellent. We'll come along and connect it there. Looking pretty good. Excellent. And it's just going to be, uh, well, it's not actually going to be used to remove material just yet. Um, now, what we do need to do, though, is give it a size so that it's fixed in space. So 5.1. Excellent. Add dimensions, 3.7. Good stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to be lazy. Now, the key to speed and efficiency and even accuracy in 3D modeling is laziness, but strategic, clever laziness that, uh, that uses the tools. So what we're going to do is we are going to mirror the sketch. So we don't have to do it again on the other side. 
We'll go along here and we'll select that geometry. And we'll come along here to the mirror command. And for the mirror line, we'll select the center line here and click apply. Oh, lovely, beautiful, excellent, good. Okay, so I think we are good. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna ahead say finish sketch. And we are going to actually be doing two separate commands using the same sketch. So we'll come along here and we'll say extrude, select the geometry, but we don't want to cut out this oval just yet. For these teeth, we want them to cut through to the bottom and we want to make sure that they affect both of the solids. So we'll click the solids list here and click both of those plies. Lovely, excellent. And next, what we'll do is we'll come along and we will find the sketch underneath the extrusion, make it visible, and we're going to extrude just the oval part. But this time, it's going to go all the way, uh, it's going to go not all the way down, it's going to go 9.5 minus 2 in that direction as a cut, and it's going to affect both of the solids. Ooh, looking good, looking good. And we'll make that invisible. These teeth are looking pretty aggressive. <laughs> we might have to deal with that later. Okay, so what we've got here are two separate solid bodies. Uh, what we're going to do now is add in the wire cutting portion. So it's just going to be modeled as a simple chamfer acting on the end. And then we can maybe trim it to size. So we'll come along here. In fact, we might do the trim first. We'll say, okay, yep. Uh, it's got to have a little uh, V cut like this and this. If you can't see the lines, hit F7. Uh, that will slice to plane. Very, very useful. Uh, we'll make sure that they're equal and their distance from the end. They're actually, the distance probably matters less than the angle. 135 degrees. That'll do. Project the geometry. And now we can cut that little bit out affecting both the solids. Lovely, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and we are going to add in a chamfer. And uh, so we'll take a quick measurement just to make sure the thickness of those uh, that bottom portion is two mils. So we'll need a chamfer of one mil on the top and the bottom. So top and the bottom. Oh, looking good, looking good. In reality, this is a bit of a sharp edge, a bit of a sliver. You might want to cut that down or remove that entirely. Um, for this, honestly, we'll leave it. It'll be fine. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. So we've got the, uh, the complex tooth portion of the uh, flyers. So wonderful, home stretch, easy parts. We just need to do the pin and uh, the handles. So let's go ahead, we'll do the pin, and uh, the pin has to nestle itself inside here, and um, it has to be its own separate solid body. So there's a couple of ways of doing this, but we'll be lazy, start a 2D sketch, and we're gonna do it on the XY plane. Now, the XY plane happens to bisect the pliers, so we're going to use F7 to slice away the material. If you hit F7, you can see the material gets sliced away. Looking at it from the front, we're going to get lazy. We'll say project geometry, that line there, that line there. And here we go. We'll use a few more lines to finish off the geometry of the pin. Now, an interesting thing to observe is the complexity in this, um, in this pin is what tolerances do you use? What um, clearances do you use as well? You know, simply creating a 3D model isn't the same as properly designing something. So that's some food for thought. So we've got our geometry. What we're going to do is we're going to use the revolution to revolve it around an axis as a separate solid body. So for the axis, we'll click and select this edge here and we'll create a new solid body. Beautiful. And that's going to be pin. And if we look at it on its own by making the other bodies invisible, it's as you'd expect it to be. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to make the handles. Uh, so the handles, uh, they're a little bit fancy, a little bit complicated. Um, they should be fine. I'm just going to approximate them because we're here to learn. Um, so let's go ahead. What we're going to do, I'm going to just create one set and just mirror it onto the other side. We'll predict the geometry of this one and we'll say, okay, say that the handles are ooh, three millimeters thick. Nice insulating handles. And I might come along here and create a line that is perpendicular 
to that edge there and that edge there. And do, 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 do. Uh, well, I don't actually know how much, maybe nine millimeters from that edge. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so I think that's all we need. Yep, we'll go ahead and we're going to extrude. And it's going to be two, op well, it's going to be one operation. It's going to be uh, asymmetrical extrusion. So it's going to go up some and it's going to go down some. So here we'll say it's going to go up three millimeters and it's going to go down 9.5 plus three millimeters. So that's going to represent the handle. Oh, we can see that it's going to impinge there. So we're going to have to change the design a little bit. That's okay. We'll come along here. I thought that the handles were too fat anyway. We'll come along here and make it two millimeters. Beautiful, wonderful. Okay, and we'll extrude it up. Two millimeters up and two millimeters down. Lovely. That looks better anyway. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in some uh, fillets. There we go, looking good. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's definitely a lazy, oh, I forgot to do something very, very important. When extruding, it was important to say new solid body to make it its own separate solid body. So we'll say that that is bottom plier, uh, bottom plier grip, there we go. And now we can see that it's its own solid body. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and we'll add in some fillets to it. There we go. And I'll say that those fillets may be one mil. Lovely. Yes, excellent. Good, 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 good. Okay. Um, so those fillets at one mil. Now, you might have said, oh, Frank, you've done something terrible. Have a look. You know, it's a solid body. How are you meant to put the handle inside that? What we really want to do is we want to subtract one body from another body. So basically we want to remove the volume of the bottom plier from there. So to do that, we'll come to combine and we're going to select the geometry that's going to be uh, affected and the tool body, which is the thing that's doing the affecting, which is that body there. And we're going to use the cut command and very, very important, make sure to tick tool bodies keep two bodies <laughs> uh, because that will make sure that you keep the bottom plier. And there we can see the material has been removed from there. Lovely. Now, rather than doing that all again, we are super duper lazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the mirror command again and we will say mirror. Here we go, mirror, select solid bodies, select the handle. And for the mirror plane, we'll choose the XY plane. Lovely and importantly, new solid. So we'll say bottom and top plier grip. Wonderful, and just we'll make sure that that two is hollow. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Okay, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. We've got all the geometry. What we need to do is just uh, add in a little bit of clearance. Now, th there are lots and lots of ways of adding in clearance, and this is probably not how I'd do it, but for, uh, for um, a quick job, uh, this will do. So say for example, you wanted to add in a 0.125 mil clearance um, between the moving parts. We'll come along here and we're gonna use something called direct edits. And these are crazy and they can be dangerous and they're very interesting, um, but I'll show you how they can be used for speedy adjustments. So what I'm going to do here is use the direct tool. And here you can move, size, scale, rotate, delete. And this applies to faces and bodies. So here I'll choose size and pick this face here, and you see that I can move the face back and forward. So here, I'm going to add in a negative 0.125. In fact, you know what might be cooler? We'll add in a parameter. Parameters, welcome to parametrics. Click the parametric button at the top, and we're gonna add in a user parameter called, um, uh, we'll say gap, and the gap will be 0.125 mil. Now, instead of putting in a number, here, what I'm going to do is just type in the parameter gap. There we go. Lovely. Do the same on the other side. Gap. Oops, that one's adding material. I just have to be careful. Oh, the other one did as well. Let's try that again. We'll say direct, size, move it a little, and then negative one times gap. Lovely. And again, other side. 
negative one times gap. Cool, wonderful. All right, next we're going to do the same uh, for the pin. So we'll come along here and we're going to adjust the size a little bit. We're going to say negative one times gap. And just hide that one. Same deal here, negative one times gap. Now, when doing uh, proper um, proper gaps, you would definitely take a little bit more time, a little bit more consideration. Be very, very careful with what size you'd use, what materials you're using, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It all affects it. It's a rich tapestry, I tell you what. Okay, so the geometry is looking good. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and we're going to save this, and I'm going to call it uh, uh, pliers. MSB. So what does MSB mean? It means multiple solid body. Now you don't need to call it that, but what the multiple solid body is going to represent is the grandfather. It's going to be the part from which the uh, the part from which the parts are created and then placed into an assembly. And if that sounds complicated, let me show you just how easy it is. So what we've got here is our pliers. We'll come along here and we're going to go to uh, manage and we'll say make components click make components and here we can choose all the solid bodies which we want to make parts from now they're going to be placed into an assembly so we're going to say pliers assembly and make sure we choose a standard millimeter assembly template and here we can do the same these are the templates that are going to be used to create each of the parts come to metric standard millimeter and Finally, we need a file location. Or just say, okay, source path. Beautiful, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna save that. And what it's done is it's actually gone off and created separate parts from each of the um, solid bodies in the part, in the original multiple solid body. So we've got a few more things to do. We have to assign materials. And at the moment, by default, they're all uh, fixed into place. They're all grounded. That's okay, but we can do better. I think we can do better. We'll go ahead and we're going to firstly assign the material. So we'll go into each of the parts. And here, let's go ahead and we'll give it something beefy. We'll say uh, stainless steel for 40. Excellent. And repeat for each of the parts. Stainless steel for 40. Lovely, excellent, same with the pin. Oops, don't make it out of bubblegum. Stainless steel 440. Excellent, and for the grips, maybe some neoprene or something like that. Uh, we'll say black. No rubber black, that'll do. Uh, rubber black. <laughs> there we go. Lovely. Cool. So we've got our materials. We've got our parts. Uh, we just want to do two more things. We want to uh, make it uh, a mobile assembly. And we also want to look at the bill of materials. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead uh, and I'm going to unground everything except for the pin. The pin I want to stay grounded. So I'll right click them all. And you can drag all of these away. And... Um, at the moment, there's no relationships. So what we want to do is we want to uh, make it so that this guy rotates about this pin. So to do that, what we can do, we'll drag them away and we will say constrain the central axis of this pin with the central axis here and click apply. And that's created our first constraint. We'll create another constraint, a flush constraint between the top and the top. And we're going to do it a lazy way on the bottom. We'll go and constraint and we'll choose insert constraint. And here we go. We can choose uh, that pin there. And depending on where you select, uh, it affects whether you're affecting the top or the bottom. There we go. Lovely. So we've got everything except for the handles. Looking good. And now we need a way of um, constraining the handles. And it's a little bit tricky because they're a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, uh, strangely shaped. That's okay. We're going to use a bunch of mating constraints. And because we know that line there, oops, 
will happen to conform there. There we go. Using a set of constraints, we can have it fixed. There are lots and lots of ways of fixing on, uh, say, for example, the handles onto the body. One of them would be to use, say, construction planes or the origin planes because they happen to have the same origin planes. Um, but uh, this way is also good and lazy. Okay, and before we finish up, I'll show you one last trick. At the moment, everything can go through one another. Um, so uh, if some things are going through one another, you can come here to inspect, analyze interference, select all the parts, and you can see how the thing is interfering with itself. If I drag them apart like that, we can say analyze interference and say no parts detected. And you might say, okay, how can we stop the parts from running into each other? There's a special trick to that. So all you need to do is select the parts that you don't want to interact with one another, right click and say ch -ch 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 contact set. This will put them into the contact set. Now, uh, when the contact solver is activated, anything in the contact set won't be able to go through each other. So we'll say activate contact solver. Ooh, very nice, very nice. I think, I think it's pretty good. I think it looks somewhat like our original flyers. Not too bad. So, fun exercise, 3D modeling, the best. Um, if you want to see this as a drawing, uh, if you want to see it as, say, for example, an assembly view or something like that presentation, please let me know in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Happy modeling. Bye.